Cincinnati Bengals defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo joins us. Let's talk about some of these new players, young players in prominent roles, some of the stars that are showing out, and how scheme has changed a little bit this year with the Bengals DC. You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up and welcome in to another edition of the Locked On Bengals podcast. I'm James Rapine along with Jake Lisko. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. And we're just moments away from getting to Bengals offensive coordinator Lou Anarumo. Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a free deposit match up to one hundred dollars lose crew save the day on sunday against the seahawks we discuss that defensive line his core four the secondary dax hill nick scott and so much more so without further ado let's get to our conversation with bengal's defensive coordinator lou anarumo lou as we talk about this 2023 defense it seems like the last couple of weeks you've really hit your stride the defensive line stepping up getting some key wins in key spots there have been some themes that i'm sure you've talked about with your guys tackling something that you've talked about with the media some explosive plays that have popped up but what has changed from your perspective being the guy in the room that's coaching that defense from the first four weeks to the last two weeks where things have seemed to go better yeah, I, I think there's been bright spots all along. Uh, it's not just the last two weeks. I, I, I feel like we've been more consistent, and that was a big theme early on that we would, we would have a bunch of good plays and some some ones that weren't so good that you know led to some explosive plays by uh, by offenses. So uh, being consistent for sure, and then you know the resolve and the type of guys that we have in that room, uh, they're never going to allow us to be anything but uh, uh, a really good defense to be reckoned with for sure you mentioned the core four earlier this week and just could you take us to the sidelines of that conversation you had because the offense had a 15 second possession after you get off the field on fourth down you get that that red zone stop and you have to go right back out there and, and you talk to your your core four yeah I, I just okay. you know my the my gut uh was that I know I looked at their faces and, you know, that's one of the reasons I like being on the sideline and not calling the game from upstairs is because you get the feel of how the guys are doing. You, you know, you get the, you get to look them in the eye and when it's a moment like that and they know, you know, they, they wanted to be out there, but I knew in, in my gut that, Hey, I want these four guys rushing the quarterback um, and, you know, taking us right down to the end of the game, even though, they were gassed and uh and i just just went over there and just said hey i, I need you four to be in the game and uh we need your best right now and they 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 don't flinch uh you know they just stood right up and we're ready to go and that's that's part of who we are and part of why we've been able to do what we've done and that's for those to... wondering that that's hubbard hendrickson hill and reader jake go yeah. ahead i just wanted to, yeah. to be yeah clear sorry about the yeah couple. so no. in my, in my, yeah in my mind bj dj inside and uh Sam and Trey. And, and as, I, as I said to everybody uh, yesterday, when I say everybody, the defensive, uh, we're in a defensive unit meeting, I said, this is, uh, this is not a, uh, you know, uh, indictment on anybody else in the room, I said, but um, these guys have been through the wars. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I want our guys, those particular those four out there when it comes to the front uh and and i want them out there in meaningful situations that has been a key for this team throughout your tenure in cincinnati those four guys as long as you've had them together on the field have been consistent to, to use your word very impressive when they've been on the field together and the chemistry they have bj hill talking about the stunt that he's talking to Sam Hubbard about out there where he gets the, the final fourth down stop. How has that been to see that come along through the years with those four guys together? Well, again, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's incredible really, because just what, what's uh, uh, BJ and Sam were talking about, 
that doesn't happen with young players. Sometimes it does, but you know, this is a this is a veteran group of guys that have a feel for and more so than me because they're out there doing it. And if they come to me and they say, hey, listen, we feel good about this particular game, um, you know, or go to Coach Hobb and, and do the, say the same thing, you know, we're going to believe and trust in those guys because, A, they always do it the right way, and, B, uh, they've, they've done it for us at a high level in, in the most important games uh, that we have in this league, playoff games and then the Super Bowl. So, um, you know, so I trust them, uh, you know, unequivocally and and um, you know it showed there in the most important moment on uh, Sunday there's another piece of the consistency that you talked about that has seemed to improve over the course of the season I didn't mean to say that the first four games there were no positives obviously they're they're always yeah. going to be things that are going pretty well but is part of that the increased comfort for for Dax for Nick Scott the the new pieces as it were where there aren't a ton of new pieces dj turner also playing quite a bit but as part of that that secondary maturing together as well i think that certainly helps you know um you know it's it's still a work in progress uh you know i think dax is uh you know finding a home and becoming comfortable in the roles that we've asked them to do there's still things that you know that uh we all need to do better um and, and he's no different, but, uh, you know, just finding that mix between, um, you know, a good combination of Nick and, and Jordan Battle now getting some reps and, you know, and, and Cheeto's injury, unfortunately, has led to uh, DJ's uh, more playtime. But at the end of the day, uh, when Cheeto kind of hurt his back the other day because he had all those snaps, uh, DJ, that is, earlier in the season, this wasn't the first time he was out there. So it kind of paid uh, dividends for us uh, that he's had to play as much as he has, and he's, he's done a good job so far. Lou, I'm hoping to go back to, to Trey Hendrickson just for a second. Seven sacks, I believe, has had a couple more uh, nullified due to penalty. Second in the NFL, mm -hmm. though, and not penalties on him, so he could have more. He could lead the league. Uh, if a few of those calls early in the season go your way, is this the best he's playing that, that you've seen? Because obviously he's had two good years for you, but is this the best you've seen from him so far? Um, you know, I, I just know Trey, he's always around the quarterback. Uh, he's around the quarterback in practice. He's around the quarterback during the games. <laughs> uh, he doesn't, he doesn't get uh, maybe uh, the national attention for whatever reason um, that maybe some of the other elite rushers do. But in our mind, he's an elite rusher. Um, he affects the game. He affects the game in uh, many ways, not just quarterback sacks, but, you know, he, he forces holding penalties, he get, uh, false starts. Um, you know, he's good in the run game. So uh, between him and Sam, we're, we're lucky. We're fortunate to have both those guys. But, but Trey is a, an elite rusher in my mind. I thought Sam had one of the best games as a pass rusher I've ever seen from him this week. Very disruptive throughout the game, taking advantage of, of a backup out there. But that's what you would hope he would do, right, when he gets that sort of matchup opportunity? Yeah, and, and I just think, you know, again, Sam, um, again, one of the guys that I think him and Josh Tupau are, are, are the only two that are remaining from 2019 on defense. Um, and... Um, I showed them some of the 2019 Seattle uh, tape and just to kind of poke a little fun at both of them. But um, Sam played, I think, 64, 65 snaps the other day, which is, you know, really uh, a lot of snaps. You know, DJ was a, around in the 50s, BJ as well. And, and I think, you know, getting back to Sam, um, you know, just the consistency that he has in the run game and then, you know, the, the great pass rush, uh, games that he runs is also his one on ones that he that he won and you know we, we always expect we have a high you know level of uh, confidence in what he his abilities will bring and boy it showed on Sunday and, and again in the in the key moments and that's what he's done for us uh, the last few few years for sure going all the way back to 21 and um, you know that run and you know we all know what he did in the playoffs last year and but he's just a consistent guy. Today's episode of Locked On Bengals is also brought to you by Jace Medical. And Jace Medical believes that everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected, whether that's an emergency situation, whether that's travel. They want you to be prepared, and that's why they offer the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you peace of mind so you're not just hoping you have access to medication when you need it. 
whatever that circumstance is. They'll make sure you have that medication in hand. Jace Medical is simple. They make it easy. They handle everything from online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery to ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared with the Jace case. Right now you can get $20 off that Jace case from Jace Medical using our code locked on at checkout at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E Medical. Dot com promo code locked on for $20 off those life-saving antibiotics. Today's show is also brought to you by FanDuel. Get into the NFL action with the Bengals on a buy. That's all right. FanDuel is still here for you. And right now you can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 guaranteed in bonus bets when you place a $5 bet. Win or lose, it doesn't matter. FanDuel, America's number one sports book, is here for you. So you're probably watching Red Zone this weekend. You're going to watch a bunch of games with the Bengals on a bye. Sit back, relax, and get into all the action from player props to spreads, over-unders, and so much more. Sign up today at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Lou, I, I knew you hated to lose uh, Jesse and, and Vaughn in free agency, but to be able to keep Jermaine and Logan, how much has that mattered with all of the uncertainty? I think we're going to ask you a, a few questions about the secondary coming up, but how much does it help to have both of those guys, Pratt and Wilson, kind of manning the middle of that defense? Oh, it's huge. I mean, it just, uh, especially, it really, especially Jermaine, um, because he's on the side of the, of the safety a little bit more than Logan. Um, you know, again, I'm thrilled to have Logan back too. That's not what I'm saying. But in regards to the um, the, the safety situation, Jermaine kind of works with those guys a little bit more, uh, maybe uh, more than Logan, uh, just by the way we line up. So the fact that he can kind of direct traffic a little bit and, um, you know, sees things that uh, – you know, maybe they don't see yet. Uh, they're starting to get better at that stuff. But yeah, uh, it, it was, it was <clears throat> excuse me, it was critical for sure. He's playing a bigger role this year is Jermaine Pratt. One of the speculated topics of the offseason was some of those third down packages where Pratt wasn't necessarily on the field in favor of an extra DB. We've seen some three safety stuff this year. We saw some four linebacker in the goal line uh, this week. What did you see from Jermaine that led to him getting that expanded role this year where he's coming off the field a little bit less? Well, he's just a, he's such a smart player and in, in his in his uh, fifth year now. I mean, he sees it uh, as good as a coach, you know, when he's out there on the field and knows what players are coming. Can You know, again, as you mentioned, uh, not having Vaughn and Jesse anymore, uh, you know, he can help direct traffic and, uh, you know, we're going to put the guys out there that we think give us the best chance to succeed. And it, as you mentioned, we'll use different packages, but uh, there's also a, th a thing where in my mind, it's if there's a little less change at times, it's better uh, just because again, you got a guy like Jermaine out there who's an extension of the coaching staff and can really help direct traffic at times. You mentioned Daxo earlier and, and obviously you guys invested a high pick in him he, he bounced around a little bit and played wherever you needed him to last year, but it's not like he was on the field a ton. Now he is. Like 99% of the snaps is is playing a, a huge role in the back end of, of your secondary, but also blitzing and, and moving all over the field. How has he progressed? Because he's clearly on the field, and we've seen him make plays, but how has he progressed the, in the way you hoped coming into this year? I think he's done a good job. Uh, I think, uh, you know, he's a superior athlete. He can really run. Uh, he's done a good job tackling. Um, you know, he's at a position where, you know, if he makes an error, it's usually results in points. Uh, any, anybody back there does. Uh, but I, I've been pleased. Um, you know, he's, he's done a good job with his assignments and, uh, you know, put in the time. In, he's putting in the time, the extra time, uh, and it's showing. So, uh, we're trying to use him in uh, the best ways we think uh, fits him. And um, as you mentioned, Blissing is one of those things. He's done a good job covering tight ends. Uh, he'll have a big challenge uh, in two weeks. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, 
you know, it's it's uh, he's uh, we're glad we have him. Uh, he's a he's a very important piece, and I'm I'm happy with his progress so far. The athleticism really pops. You talked about him being a superior athlete that shows up in the blitzes. It shows up with his range, and it seems like and you can shut me down on this if you like. It seems like we're seeing a little bit more post safety work, single high safety work, deep safety work for him in the last three weeks compared to the first three weeks. And it's a little, it's it's sort of subtle. Is that just matchup dependent stuff or is there something else that's kind of happening there where you, you wanted to see him working more at that post safety spot? Well, I think that that's his uh, natural home. You know, I think he will help us the most there, but there's also times where he's going to have to be down around the ball just because of a matchup situation or a different call or wherever it may be. So, um, you know, we feel like he's multiple enough to do both. And that also helps us, you know, that, Hey, every time he's, he's in a particular spot, they're doing this, you know, the more he can move around, the more it helps, you know, try to mess with the quarterbacks. Sticking with the, the safety room, Nick Scott, you sign him in free agency. Back in March, he's playing a time, I think, 80 something percent of the snaps. So he's obviously uh, your starter alongside Dax. What have you seen from him? Obviously, it's his first year in this system. Dax had last year to, to adjust. How has he played so far this year? Yeah, I think he's I think he's improving with each game. Uh, take another guy that takes a ton of pride in his what his job is. If he makes error, you know, he knows you know, that's something that, hey, this, I got to improve on this. And, and you see the development and practice and certainly playing out in the game. So, um, you know, I, I feel like, as you mentioned, you know, we do things a little bit different, um, but uh, he's, he's picking it up well. And, and, and I see improvement each week and we just got to make sure it continues that way. Obviously a guy you really liked in the draft, just to round out the safety room for guys that are seeing significant playing time on defense, Jordan Battle, been on the field a little bit more the last two weeks. You you don't like rotating DBs. We know that, but he's found his way onto the field. What's been the driving factor there? Is that just that he's been showing you enough that he's earned his way into those opportunities? I think so. I mean, uh, you know, and that's kind of the way I approached uh, the guys with it. I said, hey, this is not a indictment on anybody. This is just, hey, we've got another young player. Um, and it's only going to help us down the road, uh, you know, knock on wood, nobody gets injured, but injuries are a part of this game. And, you know, the fact that we can uh, give Jordan mean meaningful snaps and, uh, you know, it also helps Nick when he's standing there and watching it from the sideline, you know, and seeing all the things and same for Jordan. So those, those, I think we'll have a good balance going forward with that. Uh, but I, I, I like where Jordan's trending and, um, you know, I think uh, both those guys can help us, uh, you know, win football games, and that's what's most important. Today's show is also brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. So if you're like me and you might be struggling in some season long leagues, well, you got to get to Prize Picks because what you do is you battle you. Versus the numbers. You're battling the numbers. You're not battling sharks. You're not battling professionals and thousands of other players. No, you pick more or less than on a two to six player stat projection and watch the winnings roll in. So you may say Odell Beckham Jr. is going to go for less than 50 yards because I'm not sure he's caught a pass this year. Or Josh Allen is going to go for more than two passing touchdowns. You pick two to six players. You can get up to 25 times your money. They offer weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, prize picks, discounts, player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a free deposit match up to $100. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Lou, how would you describe Cam Taylor Britt? As, as a player and then as a person in the locker room as well as a, a leader? Because I, I do think he's he's developed into a leader in year two. Yeah. Once he steps on the field, the guy's a pit bull. Um, I mean, he, he doesn't back down from anything. Um, he wants to cover the best receiver. He'll take on a pulling guard or tackle in the run game. Uh, he's, he's as tough as they come. Um, you know, I feel like uh, – He's, he's competitive, uh, and you put that along with his God-given talent. Um, you know, he can run. He's got good length. Um, he's athletic. 
you know, and so, and he's a, he's a willing guy, you know, all of our guys are very, very coachable. We don't have anybody in the building that's not. Um, and that's part of the reasons why we're able to do what we do. Uh, but Cam is, uh, you know, he is becoming a valuable asset. Uh, he, he's only a second year player, um, really, you know, just a year and a half into his, his, uh, his career. Uh, and really, I take that back really a year because I think the first game he started was uh, Halloween last year. So, you know, he's only played uh, a number of games, but he continues to get better. Um, and if you give something up, he knows exactly what he did wrong. This is a league where they're going to catch some balls. You don't want them to catch any, trust me. Uh, but uh, that's not the NFL these days. And we just got to make sure when they do catch it, it's a, it's a minimal type yardage play. And uh, Cam, is, Cam has been great. He's obviously a, a bigger guy. You'd like to match up with DK Metcalf. Has a mentality for that matchup as well. Had a great game on Sunday. One thing that I thought was kind of funny, he, he kind of dives to try to break up the, the comeback route. Doesn't get his hand on the ball. DK gets some yards after the catch there. Was that reminiscent of the never do that again play from last year for him? It's the same play, oh, right? Oh, 100%. If you watch him, he looked right <laughs> at me on the sideline and he just he knew right away. Um, you know, and again, that's the, that's co the competitive side. He knew right away. Like I said, he knows when he makes error. Um, he's just trying to do everything he can scratch and claw to get the ball out. He knew he went with the wrong arm. Um, but, uh, you know, he's, he, I, I forgave him a little less, uh, I forgave him a little more on this one, just because I know he knew immediately, you know, that he did something wrong. But, uh, you know, I, again, I love his, uh, how he plays and how competitive he is. It helps when he has the interception and the pass break up on Tyler Lockett <laughs> in the end zone too, right? That, that'll that make it a little bit more forgivable. Sorry, James. Bit, yeah, no doubt. No doubt about it. You guys are relying on – I was just thinking about this. Uh, first rounder last year in, in Dax Hill, 31st overall pick. DJ Turner, second round rookie. Second rounder last year, Cam Taylor Britt. All of these guys are playing significant time. Our, our viewers and listeners know how hard it is to get secondary picks right even early. And all three guys look like hits. How how have you guys been able to get the right players with the right mentality, all of those things, and, and get it right with these guys? Yeah, I think it goes back to, um, you know, we said this now a number of years. I think, uh, you know, with Duke and his uh, group of guys and the scouts and and us and the coaches doing what we do, but we're on the same page when, when the scouting – and the scouting department and personnel department are in line with the coaches. I think it works, um, you know, and, that, and that's what we have here. We have great communication. If there's uh, an issue on a guy where, hey, maybe they like him more than we do or vice versa, we sit down, we watch it, we talk about it. Um, and that's how you solve those type problems. When there, it's, you know, it's a very sub subjective business, the, the scouting part of it. And um, as long as we can come to, to a common ground and know and, and the personnel people know exactly what we want and what their role will be when they get here. It helps make that process a little, a little bit more seamless. Um, but uh, you know, it's, that's a big reason I, I believe why we've been able to, you know, get good guys in the draft and in free agency. Love the, the athleticism with DJ Turner as well. The, the athleticism that pops off the page with some of the guys in the secondary, the speed that was a, a talking point, the fastest defense you've had by GPS data uh, in, in the preseason or in training camp. That, that, was, that was a fun conversation as well. One thing I wanted to talk about was the, the defensive line rotation, something you mentioned earlier. Some of the starters playing a ton of snaps so far. Sam Hubbard, uh, Trey Hendrickson, BJ, DJ inside. How would you evaluate the play of some of those guys coming off the bench? Cam Sample, obviously fantastic uh, from 4-I against Seattle this week. But what would you say about that group in general? Are, are you pleased with the way those guys are going? Is it a necessity thing for the starters? Would you like to get a little bit more out of that rotation? Um, you know, I think we do a good job with the with that part. I think there are some times when um, – and I'm not displeased with anyone. You mentioned Cam. Uh, he's done a really, really good job. And most people see when the guys are out there affecting the quarterback, right. you know, uh, you know, the Zach Carters of the world, the Josh Tupos of the world uh, that are in there kind of just slugging it out. The J2 Fellies who was up the week before, you know, in the run game, you know, that's a whole different variable that, you know, those guys are going to try to keep BJ and DJ, uh, those guys fresh and come in and do some jobs. You know, we're hoping to get Miles some more reps next week. 
um, when he when he comes back and um, get uh, back from the bye. But uh, no, not displeased with any of them. Uh, I think that uh, I'm just more comfortable when it's you know when the game's on the line. Um, the guys that have proven it um, to to us as a staff and as as a team, uh, those are the guys I want out there at the most critical critical moments. A year ago, I think there were a lot. Of, a lot of our listeners were wondering about Dax and, and his lack of playing time you know, on defense. And naturally, we get questions about Miles Murphy. How is he progressing? Obviously, it's a deep defensive line room. We just went through a bunch of guys that are getting snaps. But how is he progressing? And are you hopeful that, that his playing time could increase over the next eleven? Yeah, I, I, I certainly am. I think that um, you know he's shown improvement. Um, in, in really every aspect of his game, not just pass rushing. Uh, you, you know, we saw him get his first sack a couple weeks ago. Um, you know, uh, I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a fine line because the, the luxury we have is, like we, again, like you made a good point about Dax last year, we don't have to rush anybody out there. Um, and when you don't have to rush a young player, sometimes that helps because they don't lose any confidence. Not that uh, – you know, because that could be that could set a guy back as well. So, uh, you know, we have every every uh, intention of playing Miles uh, more as we go forward. Um, but those guys are pretty good in front of him. So, um, you know, it'll be the snaps that he gets. He's got to make uh, make them count, um, just like Cam Sample does and Joseph Osai does. Um, but uh, we're looking to uh, get get him a little bit bigger of a role as we go forward. Last couple. Thoughts from me are are more philosophical, big picture. I appreciate the thoughts that you shared about some of the players that we've talked about so far. It seems like the the blitz rate up a little bit this year, at least based on the data that I have available to me. Maybe you would disagree based on definitions of what a blitz is. I see it at about 12 a game this year so far versus about eight a game last year. And and another theme that I've noticed is that it, it seems like, you know, you're kind of getting some looks early in games showing some things to set up blitzes later a lot like you know an offense will run a play early to see how the defense reacts to set up maybe a shot play later is that something that is an intentional part of the way that you're you're going into games early just to, to set things up late we have some of that you know um where we can potentially uh, show a blitz from one side and um or not show a blitz from one side and bring it from the other and kind of play off that a little bit later in the games um, that's something that we've kind of done over the last few years. We definitely have some things where we'll, we'll not look like pressure and bring pressure and then show pressure and kind of back out. Um, so we try to have a good balance of that. But we do we do like to dictate some. It's not just the offense kind of dictating to us all the time. It's us saying, hey, you know, go ahead and block this. And, um, and, and you know, to the, to the question about the pressures, you know, the, I, I always say the, you know, the games always, the game, the games are always a little bit different. I'm going to mm-hmm. call it based on how the game goes. I'm always trying to get, um, you know, get the offense off schedule. And if, uh, you know, if it's a first and 10 and we can get him into, you know, those second and eight pluses, boy, it just helps us to, to win that series and win those set of downs. So sometimes pressure is needed in those situations. Does Dax's versatility help with that? The, the ability that he has to move around in his athleticism. I mentioned the blitzing earlier, but just random thought there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, again, there he's become a, you know, as you mentioned, he's become a guy that can really show um, that you better be able to deal with him in the blitz game. Um, so now is he down just to cover the tight end or is he down the blitz? You know, those are some of the things that, um, that we can start, you know, building on off of now as we get into the, uh, you know, the, the, second half of the season here after the bye. Always fun to have a chess piece with that kind of explosion at your disposal, I imagine. No, no question. No question. Uh, Last thing for me is, uh, again, more of a philosophical question about game planning. I heard Brian Callahan, for example, talking about how Seattle on defense kind of did what Seattle does. They they stayed true to themselves. When you're going into a week, obviously the opponent – and, and what the offenses do, what personnel they use is going to dictate some of the things that you're going to have to do from a personnel perspective on defense. You also, of course, have your own tendencies, your own blitz preferences, your own wrinkles you're trying to put in. Is the starting point more where you are and what you like to do with your guys, or is it more how do we need to adapt to the opponent this week? Obviously, both of those are, are factors that go into your game plan, but for you, is there one or the other that is more of a starting point? Uh, well, uh, good question. I, I, 
you know, I just look at it as we, we have a, a bunch of core things that we like to do that the players know I'm going to call every game, um, whether it's a coverage, whether it's a particular blitz, uh, whether it's a front structure. And then, OK, how do we how do we best adapt to what we know we're going to do to what the offense is uh, you know, going to try to attack and, you know, maybe a subtle blitz path or pattern change or an alignment of a D lineman or just playing a, uh, maybe a, a little tweak in a coverage um, that again, best fits for what the offense does. But, and then we'll always have, you know, new wrinkles obviously each week uh, that we do to try to attack what, what they're doing. But I also, again, I like to take the offensive approach sometimes and just say, all right, you know, this is not the typical call on this down a distance. Uh, go ahead and block this, you know, just see how you adjust to it or, you know, puts nickel defense out there when they're big people. You know, it's it just something like that can affect how the offense looks at things. Lou, really appreciate the time. As, as Jake said, it's become sort of an annual tradition, and uh, I know our, our listeners appreciate it. We appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Uh, it's my pleasure. Anytime, guys. Thanks again. Always great to catch up with Lou Anarumo. Two years in a row, like you said, James, got a little little tradition brewing with the Bengals DC, and we appreciate also shout out Emily Parker for helping to get that set up. And great insight, as always. Love to hear about how things are changing. Great to get into some philosophy with Coach Anarumo as well, which we also did with Brian Callahan. So if you missed any episodes this week, this is not a week to miss going all the way back to our film review that's on Monday night to the two-part interview with Brian Callahan. That's our last two episodes of this one that you've obviously listened to all the way to the end with Luana Rimo. That's going to get us to our bye week. The Bengals are back in the building on Monday, so I guess we have one more episode before the Bengals are back in the building that we'll record sometime on Sunday. But until then, thanks for listening to this episode of the Lockdown Bengals podcast. Hootay, and have a good one.